I am Wolfgang Gorlick, and of course this is my sec. Today we're going to be doing a team presentation on the RUCTF. And on the IRC channel today, we got um, Z Tango Yet 313 and Dot Hack. So as, as things progress, I'll be reading off their witty comments and insights. Um, <laughs> not clicking, not clicking at any links they may throw up. Good Lord, don't click. <laughs> so, all right. Uh, I want to start with a quote from Mark Stanislav. You know, he said something I thought was pretty cool. He said, our, our CTF style at MySec is like a pickup game in the Sandlot Leagues. So anyone can join, anyone can come. We want to do something cool. Someone puts the, the word out, and, you know, people just show up. And that can have some interesting results. You know, we, we met a, a lot of people at the CTF who I had never met before. And it creates a, an interesting environment. I, I like to hope a welcoming environment. So I want to throw out that quote, start with Mark, you know, our CTF style, pickup game, Sandlight Leagues. We're in it to win it, or we're rather in it to, <laughs> to have a good time. Today we're going to be going through um, what the RUCTF was, one of the attacks we did. Kyle's here to, to give us some insight, so Kyle, I'm going to turn it over to you. Um, if you're going to be ready, yeah, yeah. Don't don't worry. I talk uh, I talk slow. I'm known for talking slow. <laughs> and then Len's got some great ideas on training and what we can do between now and the next uh, CTF. And D Tom, Derek's got some some uh, some words. He's going to talk to us about the next event. So, Wolfgang Gorlick, J Dub Gorlick on Twitter. For those of you joining us on the YouTube channel, this is actually a follow-up call. We did a, a 101 call that talked about this present or this uh, event too. So if you're just joining us, you may want to watch that first before you jump into this. But yeah, I was the team captain. So going under the auspices of those who can do and those who can't captain, um, I was the, the team captain for the RUCTF. So let me set the stage here a bit. The way the RUCTF worked was we had 99 teams, 99 teams around the world, and MySec was the Michigan team. So people from all over the country, all over the world competing. Each team was given a vulnerable image. So we all had the exact same image. And that image, the decryption key, was made available right before the event. So no one had a head start to look at it. It was hosting a number of services. And the way we were set up was that um, you would download it, you run the virtual server, you'd, everyone was on the same IP address, so 192, I'm sorry, so 10.23, our team number, which in our case was 84, and then dot three for the vulnerable box. So everyone was um, on the same IP address team, we all knew where everyone was. At the start of event, the organizers, the RUCTF organizers, opened up the VPN so everyone could communicate, all the teams could see each other. So we know where the people were, we knew what services they had because we could see what we had, all the images were the same, so it leveled the playing field. And there were also plenty of IP addresses above that for workstations, for people who were on our team and for competing teams. So that was the network setup. And uh, we had shirts, which was good. Uh, what was that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> there was a person in that shirt. Uh, he didn't make it. Sorry to say. Sorry to say. So we did have shirts, you know, black, red, and blue, uh, which was pretty cool. We had a great war room given uh, to us graciously by online tech, so kudos to them. There you can see our war room is that hack is getting us all set up. Plenty of monitors, plenty of space, plenty of work room, and a, a great network connection, too, which I, I think helped. Um, dramatically because some of the people, especially towards the end of the competition, there's DOS attacks going on and everything, some of the people just could not maintain the availability, the defense, because their, their internet pipe just could not take it. There's another pic of the war room, a little bit more in action. As you can see, Kyle is looking furiously at his code. He got uh, Taz Drummer in the back there. He was looking at some Python and .hack and Ztangle. Cracking our way and whatever they're cranking away. It looks like Dratus, I think. So 
So that was our space. It was a wonderful space. Thanks again to Online Tech. One more pick. And as you can see, the stand-up terminal is actually hosting our, uh, our vulnerable server. So you see VirtualBox in this picture. So there are several services that uh, we had to keep up. The points were based on defense, which is availability of those services. Not only had they, did they had to be up, so in other words, IP connectivity, TCP connectivity, they also had to be working. So, for example, you can see here that our CMS, which is a crypto service, our fast music, which is a, you know, a music streaming service, were both mumbling in this particular screenshot, which meant that we we're not getting the traffic up them quick enough. So points were awarded on availability, points were awarded on responsiveness, that's the engineering or the administration side of it. And when we started, there was a couple of services, such as Meteoros, that weren't running at all, that we had to go and read the documentation and actually finish the setup on. So there's a strong systems administration component to this uh, event. The attack was capturing other people's flags. Uh, as we talked about in the 101, some of those flags were very easy, such as IPS, we just had to download the files. Some were more complicated, like Twitya, which we'll hear from Kyle today. And then the uh, advisories, now this is pretty cool. Some people tell you that the RUCTF was primarily a programming uh, challenge, which I, I could see why they would say that, because the advisories were looking at the code or figuring out how to attack it, actually submitting up to 17 different ways that attacks could happen, along with your recommended code fixes. So it's pretty cool. You'd, you'd find an attack, you'd attack it, you'd send up an advisory, there's 17 total. Those had the most points. So you can see down at the bottom, Old Europe, Fast Flux, they both submitted, you know, uh, Old Europe 14, Fast Flux 17 advisories, and that's just a ton of points. So next time we do this, we really want to take advantage of that. But what I liked about this, this event, was there were systems and administration challenges, there were programming challenges, there were engineering challenges, there were security challenges. It wasn't uh, something where you could just download Metasploit, point it at a box, and pop something and get a point. These were brand new services that you look at and figure out. There's a video that shows the traffic. I'm going to bring that up here. on YouTube, RUCTF 2011 game visualization. There we go. So hopefully everyone can see that. Yes? Good. People on the channel are good. So you see my sec is down here in the lower left, the fourth ring in. The first challenge, and you'll see we were one of the first people to, to achieve this challenge, was simply downloading the server, unencrypting it, so we did it on SSD, which was real fast, and getting the services to talk to the VPN, which we did real fast. So you can see these uh, circles, the green circles around the blue circle represents our services being up. And then people started attacking. Now, at this point, we haven't attacked anything. I think we're just looking at our code. It actually takes a while. As you can see, everyone else starts beating each other up. We're just sitting there, sitting there quietly. What was kind of interesting was many of these services were solved. Um, the exploits were solved and cracked within an hour. And some of the teams were looking at that inbound TCP traffic, these so we're seeing back and forth here, which is a TCP connection to a TCP connection. They're looking at that and extrapolating how people are attacking and then using that information to attack others. So it's something we may want to do next go around. A uh, couple, couple bits of information about the services. The CMS service was a crypto message server, not a content management system. I know, it confused me too. <laughs> um, CMS crypto, it was written in Perl, back-ended on Apache 2 and, and post, post 3 SQL. ESP was a card game, basically it was a, a client server over HTTP app that uh, the server shuffles and returns cards, and then the client shuffles and, and so forth. Written in Java, the solution there was to, um, to break the crypto. It ended up being a substitution cipher. We didn't solve that in time. That wasn't one we looked at, but there is a good write-up online if you want to Google it. Fast Music was that music player. 
Our challenge here was completely system administration. They kept mumbling, you know, as the network load slowed down the scoreboard from checking our tunes. FFD9, that was one that uh, we had some fun with. It was a photo sharing site written in Perl, back-ended on Mojolicious on uh, MongoDB. IPS, we got some flags off that. That was covered in the 101 call. Um, Boost Sack did a lot with it. And then in terms of figuring out the attack, and then we uh, productionized it. So there was an intrusion prevention system. It had two parts, uh, written as a web service and a kernel module. Kernel module was in C. Uh, web service was Python and CGI. It was back-ended on like TBD. Market was a uh, stock market analysis, and I was back in and did that in Ninex, or Ninx, as you will. Meteoros was processing weather forecasts. This was a cool one. It actually download the file, basically a meteorological data file, crunch it, and upload it. And you had to optimize, first you had to get it to work, then you had to optimize it in terms of how fast it was you know, able to send those files back up. And the availability was based on your ability to pull the file on crunch it and send it back up. So you had to have a fast pipe, a fast server, and you had to keep everything available. Whoa! <laughs> They're just beating the hell out of each other now. Yeah, so you had to keep everything available. Uh, Meteoros, processing weather forecasts, uh, written in Python, back ended to Twisted and SQLite, and, uh, and of course Twitya, which I'll let Kyle talk about. So with that, Switch back to the presentation. Yeah, you can watch the whole video online. It's a 10-minute video. So middle of the event, my part of this, as I said, was team captain. You know, those who can do, those who can't captain. <laughs> but uh, in the middle of the event, there were patches. Patches were released. So we're on Linux, um, which is NOAS I haven't used in years. We're doing virtualization with uh, OpenVZ, which is something I hadn't heard of before this competition. We're in the middle of a CTF right, where the downtime is costing us points. These patches come, and I'm like, huh, I can do this. Patch? No problem. Challenge accepted. <laughs> so, I so like, yes, damn it, I get to do something. So that was my fun, and uh, I threw up this meme. But of course, that hack always has to one-up me with the insanity wall. Manager patches Linux system. Should the dot hack what ups me again? But uh, that's really all I had. I wanted to give you guys an overview of what the competition was like. Uh, again, going back to to Mark's comment, that's like a pickup game in Sandlot League. You know, there's lots of CTFs. Any one of you guys sees one you're interested in, put a call out, put it on Twitter, send out an email, throw it on the IRC channel. Hey. This weekend's coming up. I'd like to do this. Anyone interested? Now, likewise, if you're interested in joining in, keep an eye on these things. You know, if something comes up, timing's right. You're available that week. We're doing it from home. Or, you know, it's by our, by our house where we're having a war room. Come on out. Show up. You know, you, you look at something like this. I mean, this our UCTF with MySec was 100% a team event. It was definitely a team event. No one person could know all these things. No small team even could know all these things. If you think about it, we had several languages, right? We had Python, Perl, we had Java and C. We had several web servers. You had Apache, you know, Light TBD, Twisted, Minx. You had several database servers, you know. MySQL, PostgreSQL, SQLite. There was a ton of stuff going on with this. And, um, and everyone had a part. Everyone could play a part. Everyone could participate. And I'm really looking forward to hearing what Len has to say, training up, and being sharper next year. But I think this year really showed that as a team, when we come together, we can put a lot of talent in one space. So 99 teams worldwide, we came in 30 seconds. That's huge. So I'm really excited about that, and uh, thank you all for joining. And with that, Kyle, we're good to, to send it over to you. You got some things you want to throw to me? You want to, yeah. you want to do this? So, I don't have very many slides here, but, right. 
Can so we got the house slides up if everyone's ready to throw his walk through? Alright. So this is CTF walkthroughs, but I really only have one service in this one. Um, we're going to talk about the Twitya service from the RUCTF that we did a few weeks ago. So basic idea is we've got a service that is Java based. It has an HTTP front end with some Perl scripts that basically glue everything together and a simple homegrown DB backend written in Java. We have all the source code and if you want to try and follow what we did, you should just look it over really briefly. You should be able to figure it out pretty quick. Um, there are a few vulnerabilities uh, where you could create your own authenticated user directly through the HTTP the, the web page, but even if that was removed, there's still a hole because the DB uh, backend is just a, uh, basically a, a socket listening on port 50,100 um, and it's open to the world by default. There's no firewall rule on it. So we can just pass our commands right to it and never have to bother with the web interface. So how do we talk to it? Really, really simple. simple. Just, just Telnet, Telnet or Netcat net and we use the commands that we can find right in the source code. So this little clip has uh, like how to get the list of topics and then how to view individual topics and that was one of the places that we found keys. So um, we'll talk about like how the actual database looks in a minute. But so now what do we do? We have a copy of the service and we know what the DB code looks like. So the source code basically tells us where the DB stores all of its information. And it's in these like flat files uh, in this directory that's home slash twitya slash d. And each one of these files that is listed right there contains uh, one item from the database or several items from the database. And here I've uh, printed out the contents of one of the items. Uh, the first line uh, talks about whether the user is currently authenticated and like when it registered. Um, I don't remember what the second one does, but on the third one you have a string that you can definitely tell fit the pattern for the key that we got, which was it was 32 letters long, one single block of 32 characters that ends in an equal sign, and uh, that's a flag. So how can we use this like information that we've gathered through this process to kind of automate an attack? So uh, this is a little bash script up on top that goes through and finds all of the flags in the set of files that were there. Um, since we do have our own copy of this service, we can actually perform this on ourselves to try and figure out what, what variables those particular DB items have in common. And then just find all of the flags, then test our little sequence of, of commands on ourselves to make sure it works, and then go test it on somebody else's and script the crap out of it. Just basically make a file that has in the that has all of those contents in there, pipe it into Netcat, and then output all of the results into a file for each connection that you made. And that's what that last script basically does. I don't have a list of commands here because it's sitting on a in a file in Ryan's laptop, but we'll email that out later. Um, but basically that was just uh, fuzzing for all of the different possible items that could have been in the database and uh, pulling back the contents of each one. And so then we just filter the output of the, these files for uh, the flags using the script up top using that for x in grep r for equals uh, which basically looks through each file in all of the directories and subdirectories uh, that you're close to and then pulls out just the flags. Uh, so that is basically all of the pieces to automating the attack, basically putting it all together means performing the last script on the page, the last little bash command on the page, and then the first one. And that's all of the flags. So the one thing that we're missing here is a way to automatically submit all of the flags, but I think we'll work that out for the next competition. Anybody have any questions? I'd be happy to go into more detail. I know some of that was really vague. If I could make a couple comments. Sure, sure. First off, this is the exact type of thing that you want to do here. You looked at the code, you figured out what it was, you didn't just stop at the fact that you get into the web page, you figured out that you go directly to the database. 
Yeah, and I can't, I can't actually take, take credit, credit for that. For I think that, that was either Chris or Mark that figured out you could go directly to the database, but absolutely. Yep, yep. So you pull all the right pieces together and you get a win out of it. And I'd say that that's generally how attacking a service should go. The first step is to look at the code, figure out what it does, orient yourself to the service, break down the rules, how it works, and see if you can figure out what a flag looks like. Because not every competition has something this standard where you're just looking for a, a, you know, 32 consecutive characters which terminate with an equal sign. Yeah. And not every one will you 31. have the code to look at. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the 32nd character is the equal sign. Yeah, but yeah, and I mean that or for the, for the most part you have a copy of the service though in it most of the competitions. Case, but not yeah. every single one will you be defending the same thing. Right, the there are some where you just attack a remote node, but this is pretty much how fingerprinting should go too. Like when you're going to remote service, I talked about two different halves. One where you look at the code to figure out what to send it, and another is where you just enumerate that half of it rather than having rather than having an actual copy of what to do. And that was one of the things I liked about this competition is it wasn't like you could download, you know, the latest exploit or, you know, the latest thing off of Metasploit or whatnot and just run it. You actually had to go through and look at the code and figure out how to attack it. That would be a sub game for sure. You would not be playing the same game as everybody else if you were playing that way. No. Yeah. An interesting sub game, but so that's pretty much all I've got. Uh, but if anybody wants to talk in more detail about how to like automate this process, I think we should probably have a conversation about how to actually build an automatic submission service. It's not a very complicated process. It's usually just uh, either curl to submit to a web form, or in this case, it would have been a Telnet client that basically connected uh, to the submission server and fired off. I think we got one working with Telnet at the very end, or with yeah, Mark's Ruby yeah, script. Mark, Ruby. Mark had one with Ruby that would, if you gave him a file for flags, which was flags. Was yeah. That, IPS? that was the IPS service that we called them. Yeah, well, if you gave it, it would process line by line out of the IPS you submit. Yep. And that's basically would have taken the input from, or the output rather, from my little flag finder script yep. just as well. Yep. Yeah. So. If I'm hearing this correct, it would have been nice to have a repository that everybody had access to to drop files and such. Well, this is what we were doing with Dratus at the uh, last competition. But not as effectively as I think. I think that it needs to become part of people's workflow. Yeah. That was the biggest thing. Is that um, so? The biggest two things that I've learned in the last like three months of doing capture the flags nonstop is that people have to get to know each other. You have to know what the different elements of your team are, what everybody's good at, because frequently challenges require this sort of cross-threading where different people have to be able to work together and you have to know who's good at what so that you know who to tap, right? So that you know who to try and bring in on your particular project. Um, and I would also say that uh, aside from knowing what everybody is good at, kind of getting a feel for what you'd like to do, what people like spending their time on too. So just because you don't necessarily understand outright the code that is in front of you, somebody in your group might, and they might be able to help you walk, you know, help you walk through it and help you figure out what's going on in something. So I think that that team aspect of it can't really be overlooked. And in the RUCTF, those are different, four different languages. There's Java, Perl, Python, um, and there's a C service or C++ service. That's probably yeah. Like that, that was the one that was twisted server, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. yeah. Twisted is twisted is a Python is module. Yeah. yeah. That was Meteoros was I know Meteoros was Python based. I don't know yeah, it used twisted I think. Uh, in the HTTP, HTTP based class or whatever it is, the HTTP server. Are you saying one of the one of the services was twisted? And I was looking at it and I'm like it's not an Apache web server. No. Yeah. No, uh, there, there was a pat, there was an Apache server. There was Twisted. There was also a uh, light like, in, yeah. or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Light P like light PD or whatever it is. The yeah yeah. And um, yeah, there were a couple. I think the IPs one was a binary service. There were there was a, a quite a variety of things there. So I think it's that's those marketplace with Python too. Yeah. I think that's pretty typical of competitions though. They usually don't like. 
funnel down to a single language. So I've done like I think three more now since RUCTF, um, and there's diversity seems to be a big theme. Uh, they want something for everybody in every competition, and so I think we should kind of try to figure out what we're each good at, so what we can contribute to a given scenario. And I mean, it's not really the time to be modest because you don't really know what you can do until you try. And with people asking, you know, having pe people talking to each other and asking each other questions about what they can do or if they know this or if they know that is the quickest way for us to get to learn what everybody's good at, what everybody can do. Yeah. And sometimes just talking to somebody about it as you're articulating it, you're going to go, oh, or they're going to sit there listening to you and say, wait a minute, what about? Yeah, and it can really flip that switch that helps you understand everything, put it all in perspective or get you through something that's complicated for you. But, um, yeah, this was a, an interesting model, and it would be great to do it again right after it happened. So I think that that brings me to another point, which is it would be great if we could do, so we talked about packet capture, just because that lets us recreate the whole scenario that made the game possible. If we can, so our goal should be to create, like, records that allow us to just replay the game from fresh, right? We have a copy of the base image that we can redo every time, but what we didn't have this time was a packet capture that we could just replay at it to figure out when flags are created and what, what made them, right? And we can try to reverse all of that with just the, the data that we have, with just the blank image, and try to figure it all out. But it's really easy if we can see that we get a packet from, like, the organizers, and all of a sudden we have new flags in every service, or we have new flag in a service. And I think that that's something that we need to work on, too. Yeah, that's a... That's a perfect point because we've got this clean image, you know, the original image they gave to us, but those flags are being created and deleted every few minutes throughout the whole competition. And without the packet capture's ability to duplicate it, between the packet captures to duplicate that, the patent repository, as you mentioned, there really is no way for us now to go ahead and repeat it. Or well, I got copies of the repo while we were playing. Oh, you did? I, I'm pretty sure I downloaded them on my personal copy of the machine. I just don't know where my personal copy of that machine ah. is. So I have them somewhere. So that would be helpful, because I know Zetango is doing patch steps on it. Yeah, the other thing is, if you could figure out where they're, if you could be monitoring the file system for new files, mm -hmm. things such as that, yep. these are things that we can, you know, let's start talking about them. We can take a look and see if we can figure out what ones will be, and we can actually do them, we can scale. Yeah. Right. Because it's, it's all about understanding how it's being attacked and how it's being defended mm -hmm. and learning from it. Because when you're out there in the real world, this crap is happening every day, and it's not some simply faced kid in the basement anymore. Well, that, and that was one of the points I was making to, uh, to one of my colleagues, was like, well, why would you do something like that? I was like, think about this. i got a bunch of services that are written that are insecure. That sounds like my day job. You know, I've got all the time. I've got to maintain no matter what. That sounds like my day job. I got a patch without anyone noticing. That's my day job. And at the same time, people are throwing whatever they can, trying to get in and trying to mess it up. And it's very real world from that perspective. So I'd say that you highlighted a great, uh, a couple of great things. So for one, we are in a high pressure situation. Uh, so. I think that we have to focus on the fact that that means that our, our time is much more valuable during the competition, yeah. and we need to not spend time trying to learn these particular things during the competition, but keeping the information for the things that we don't understand so we can post-mortem, because our time is really compressed. The value of our time is compressed into a small space during the competition, but after the competition, we can get all the valuable learning out and take however long we need to to do it. So it's not that valuable for us to just be there, and the yes. packet capture is really valuable for after, and it can help us do specific tasks, but we need to not be spending time on it during the competition. We need to, we have like face tasks, so like figuring out like what creates a flag is valuable, right. but figuring out like how it affects each individual service or something like that doesn't necessarily need to be done then, or it can be split out. We just have right. to focus on using our time efficiently. And, and same thing with droidists, right? We should, right. We should not be trying to learn droidists while we're trying to learn how to, you know, win this competition and doing some of these things well in the back. The other thing is, if you can figure out some of what's going on and you've got an IDS type system running, you've got the potential of throwing up a flag saying, hey, new flags just something going out, hey, 
we know that new slaves are split out, we still get them. Right. So my response to that is not that you're wrong. I think that that's really quite correct. I think that it should probably also be automated. So the last game that I played in was uh, entirely centered around automation. Rounds were approximately two minutes long, and inside of that two minutes, flags were valid. If you didn't submit by the end of that two-minute window, that flag, all the flags expired. Oh, wow. So the whole game was about automating everything. You had to automate your exploitation, automate your submission, automate absolutely everything. And I, there's really no point in not automating for most every game. You're talking about the 30 seconds that you could be spend, spending looking at a new service instead of trying to submit a flag. So I think that getting this sort of central, like, submission service or exploitation and submission service, like, pluggable framework that we can just take modules that we write, which are written in Bash or written in Python or whatever. It doesn't really matter what they're written in, but they just basically take in an IP and uh, or and the service name or whatever, and it, it fires off the right module, which goes to a like a file descriptor or whatever, and we just pull that back in, like pull the output of it back in. And it's just, it's just something that's pluggable, a framework that we can all understand and train to write these little modules for to let us automatically do this stuff, save us time in the long run. Maybe Metasploit would be a good framework for us to leverage based on Ruby. Yeah, but... I don't know it would work. But the one thing that I want to point out here is we're talking about a repository, we're talking about Dratus. Dratus is great for having the stuff, but I think we also need a file system that we're dropping them on that we can be running scripts on, whereas maybe right. you're pulling down the flags... Pulling things in and out of Dratus is painful. Just by the clip, just by clipboard in and out of Dratus is really painful, and I agree with that. I think yeah. that maybe a central place to, like, upload whatever we're working on, whatever script we have written, or right. Yeah, we could, but that's still the problem of getting it out, right? We could actually have it probably stored in a file somewhere, but this is sounding much, much like further away from the traditional role of Dratus and much closer to just running like SVN on a cron job or something. Right. Like this is like and every five minutes it grabs everything you're working on and that's not have information like put your flags in this folder or this directory. But we wouldn't actually put the flags in Dratus. Yeah. Right. We put them in that directory and the service would be running that would submit. A lot of what Dratus is used for is when you're in a team effort where you're documenting it because you're going out afterwards and you're submitting to the customer, this is what I find. It's about documenting what you're doing while you're doing it. And that's, that's what I meant earlier when I said that we need to get used to having that be part of our task flow because I think for most of us, we're just busy trying to figure out what the hell is going on and we need to be focused on being able to, for somebody else to come in and join us while we're working on it without us having to spend that time explaining it to them. Yes. So the documentation has to be part of our workflow and that's the hardest thing to actually bring into it. I mean, it's, it's, almost, impossible to, it's almost impossible to train somebody on while you're playing the game. That needs to be something that if we do, like, practice, we, I mean, we now have this vulnerable image, right? We yep. can do practice rounds, or we have other ones that... It's not exploitable out there. It's yeah, an and, and there are plenty of other games that have released their, their past images. Like, the ICTF for the past, like, 10 years is out there, and the one for this year I have a copy of that we could run as just a test game so that we can practice getting used to documenting what we're doing while we're doing it. Same thing with the Hacker Labs OWASP challenges. Yep. That's what uh, Taz Drummer and I were doing in documenting. Yeah. And, you know, there's another thing. If you get these images that have been compromised and things done with that, you can take these images and you can use them to learn how to do forensics. Yep. When did this go on here? What did you get out of this? And if we have some people that are interested and we start doing things like that, they may be able to come up with after the fact say, hey, you know what? I figured out this was going on that was going on, which gives us some insight into the next one. Now, there's a lot of talent sitting in this room and on the, uh, the IRC channel and that. There's a lot that can be done here. I see a lot of potential. Yeah, I'm interested. Everybody except that hack has a lot of potential. Oh, <laughs> wow. You don't have to like like that hack. No, I'm just saying. John Hack says, I'm really talented at memes. That's <laughs> <laughs> that is first or All right, cool. We'll flip it over to Len then. You're on the spot. I'm leaving now. No meta's gone. Okay.
Now, can you hear me? Because I don't have it in my mouth. That's what I do, just to cover your mouth. <laughs> Okay, so let's see. <coughs> okay, I think everybody did a fantastic job. I think the fact that you ended up 32nd out of 99 was a great showing. But I think we can take it up to the next level. This is who I am. As you can see, I've been around for a while. I'm one of the old guys here. About 20 years doing this stuff. I know how to build it, architect it, break it, etc. I like playing around different things. That's why I've done all those things, because I get bored doing one thing and I move on to the next thing. I'm not a master of anything. I'm just another guy, and I stand on the shoulder of giants. And when I fall, I land on my ass. Now, as far as I understand, this was the first real attempt for you guys to do a CTF coordinated together. It's a great start. But I think we can move things up. I don't think. I'm going to yes. You click that okay. How's that? Okay. And you know, there's a few things that can be done. I'm not trying to advocate that we go do a rigid structure because that's not what this is all about, and that's not how people learn with a rigid structure. A little bit more prep, some more structure, and some more coordination and working together. There was some of it, but there could be more. A little bit of training. You know, you've done this. It's time to start working on doing things. You've got uh, Python coming up, I believe. We can go back over the different things that we've done, and we can move forward. Doing things like if everybody had a little mini CV saying what they feel that they could contribute so that you've got something to reference whoever is working on coordinating this. Packet captures. They're wonderful things to have. You can see what people are doing. You can see how they're doing it. Having an IDS and IPS in place to throw up alerts. You know, if you know what somebody else is doing attacking you, that might be what you need to attack them. I like that. One of the teams, I think I've talked to some of the people in this room this, but one of the teams that they had was they had a packet capture set up for every single service, and then they had one person on the team just watching that particular service and looking at the traffic and extrapolating from that traffic and attack, and then they could go ahead and do that type of analysis. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, things like everybody had the same image to start out with. If we taken would have been able to put up another image that we could scan locally to take a look at what's doing it, that could have possibly given us a leg up on figuring out what's going on rather than hitting another remote system. And then you could also have a system where you could just rip into and stop the code and dig into it without having any downtime. I mean, these are just all thoughts. I'm not saying any of them's the be-all, end-all. And now, as far as any structure, it's got to be flexible. When you find something, you go running with it, and it works. You've got to run with it. You know, some initial assignments, coordinators. I mentioned the mini CVs. I heard somebody use the word productionize at the CTF. I like the thought, but it is weaponizing it because you're using it for attack. It's sexier. We want to be sexy. <laughs> and lazy admins. Automate everything you can. We could have looked into, if we would have known they were going to do the uh, updates and patches, we could have pulled down a local rep of what was going on. Then we could have gotten, you know, if we had to replace a system, we would have had the local copy to be able to run from. And if we would have been able to capture different images of that repo, that repo, then we could sit there and go back and redo the entire thing. Okay, now this is this. Look at what they patched. Learn from the patches and what they fixed. That's a very good point because the patches are all over the VPN, so we can no longer get them to 
Yep. So th they're gone. Now, we didn't know this was going on. You got the Dreadus coordinators talk. There's, there seem to be a fair amount of little conversations going on here and there. We need to step up with communication. Now, you're doing the debriefing, do-overs, go back and redo the CTFs, take a look at it, dig into it. You have people here who are not a program. You have people who know how to do this aspect and that aspect. As we learn these things, talk about it with each other. The whole idea is to learn it, do it, teach it. That's it. What do you guys think? Yeah. And you need people that. Uh, you know, uh, I vaguely remember reading about one of the, you know, one of the C, uh, DEF CON CTF write ups. And it was in, um, I think it was one of the, the presentations by, I can't remember who, but they were doing a post mortem. I think it was in like 2016. Yeah. Was it the Dreadus presentation? I think, I don't know, I, I can't remember. But, well, there, that was one of their things, you know, about. Um, about CTFs a year, that would be a rotating role. Yeah. Like, I'd love to do RU CTF again next year. Mm -hmm. You're going to be doing captaining. Captaining? Uh, captaining. Leading champion. Are you going to take the coordinator role for that, then? Ghost in the Shell. I don't, I don't know. Ghost, Ghost in the Shell probably goes three days, though, for five hours each day. So that's kind of a, that's not even a full day or a, I think it's just one that can be distributed. Yeah. You know, if we can get people that are willing to do it, you know, we get enough people that we could rotate people on different days. Yeah. It would be nice to have one person that would kind of bridge between one day to the next, maybe one person that goes through all three, maybe one person that is on the first day that goes to the second day to kind of hand off, and then somebody else goes from the second day to the third day to hand off. And, you know, I do believe the coordination is key. The last CTF I was on, because I really, you know, I came in and stopped by and saw you guys for a little bit, but the last CTF I was on, I spent half the CTF trying to coordinate, and we won the CTF at 2.08 a.m. And we were the only ones on the system. But that was one thing that I committed when we got on there. I said, I don't know what you guys are doing, but I'm not going to bed until we've done this. Well, you got Dreadus, you know, you've got Dreadus set up. You started using it. You had the, uh, your 101 that you did where you talked about it. We can use Dreadus for distributed, distributed communication. You can pull in end maps and things such as that. And it can be used as a communication tool, but you also need to have the verbal and the talking and the back and forth. And if somebody finds something and they don't know how to leverage it, or they find something and say, hey, what the heck is this? But, you know, you went and you did, you had your blue teams, your, your blue team, your red team, and your, your black team, which, I've, what do you call that? Those were script kitties. Those were the, here, do this, and run with us, and keep pounding on it, correct? I think it ended up being everyone just picked the color they wanted. As <laughs> opposed to red team, blue team. But yeah, that, that, was the, that was the original idea. Because if we do that again, I would like to have a purple shirt because I want to flip back and forth. I like playing both sides of the coin. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, Don Hacks it up for us. Anyone who wants to come get it, we've got our notes up there right now from the RUCTF. 
Uh, then mentioned the 101 video, which is also on our YouTube channel. So if you want to see that, we basically walked through. Very this small map. You good? You done? I'm good. Back to me. We all set that heck. Okay. No. No. So uh, I'm D Tom, and uh, I don't know. I, I I really enjoyed the you know the first one we we tried was the seesaw. That was a little bit different format than um, than the R C R U C T F E. But I don't know. I hit a ball on both of them. And I feel like every time it really outlines what I don't know, and you kind of like figure out where you need to focus on and in the areas that you can you can uh, improve yourself. And um, you know, I, th I think it's really helped me a lot in those in those facets. So, you know, we were looking at the Ghost in the Shell code. So that's going to be kind of like the next uh, 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 capture the flag, you know, type competition. So I think this is the first year it's opened up to the public. So um, we're going to probably try and do this right here. So we got the Ghost in the Shell code. This was last year's. So uh, each one of these little dots here that you see, um, those represent kind of like a similar challenge to the seesaw. Yes, but you can only move in a certain direction, I think, whereas the seesaw, you can pick any one you wanted. Yeah, so and I think they get harder on the inside or something like that, would that be correct? So I think this would be a, a good one for us to do, um, especially with Dreyas, but this goes over three days, and I think it's open for a oh, like period of time, time. Like, like five hours a day or something like that, so. Mm -hmm. I, I believe so. I haven't looked too much into it. Uh, Oh really? So for the for the finals and for balls, balls are usually done virtual only, and then they said this year the uh, finals should also be done over virtual. So oh, so it's really take the whole thing out. So, so yeah, that's one thing that I I I think is cool because you know see saw we had a lot of fun, but there was we couldn't we couldn't uh, get past the initial round since we're not you know in the education space or whatever so. Um, you know, I think it's something we could honestly compete in. And we're going to start looking at this after probably the holidays. I think everybody will be good, and we'll probably hopefully have some time. So um, one thing I want to do is, you know, after the holidays start, we have Dreyas already up. I think there's already a section for devoted to Ghost in the Shell Code. And we can, there's, you can still take a look at some of the old challenges. So. Is this the style that it is, where it's the, you know, progressive? Yeah. I think there's a lot more to this one with everybody working together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We all have to work. I mean, we all are going to be blocking at the same yeah. challenges, essentially. So. Yeah. So and Tango adds that it's 4 to 8 p.m. on Friday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. on Saturday, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. on Sunday. Okay. So those are the hours. Yeah. And that was kind of similar. Seesaw was the entire weekend, and everyone kind of jumped in and out. You know. We did each other's comments. Yeah, <laughs> I know, and so that was, uh, that was like our initial. Uh, that was the, that was, that was like the minor leagues for us. So we're we're working on it, but um, you know, I think this will be a lot more organized. We'll have Dreyas fired up. All our information we posted there. We can work together. We'll all know about it. You know, I think some some people came in with like an hour to go with seesaw. So um, and we'll hopefully be able to practice. So we're gonna take some time uh, at you know January probably as soon as the holidays will be talking about it and really starting to hopefully prepare and um, you know take a look at some of the old ones. So they have a warm up round, I think it's nine o'clock this week. Yeah, they have a warm up round on Oh on the sixth. That's so that's even quicker than I had thought. What's the warm up round? I can't imagine the warm up. So, okay. Well, we're going to have to take a look at it. And maybe it would benefit us to start uh, looking ahead even before then. But I was planning on focusing into the holidays. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, working? New Year's, New Year's Day? I don't know. Slacker. <laughs> I'm almost at 40 hours on the 
you, you really you were born a week and after a month, it sounds like. Did you take photos of you as a holiday? I don't like to talk about stress. Yeah. yeah. So I've, been, I've been in Michigan. This is my third night this week in Michigan. And it's an hour to get to the border. So I think in, the, in terms of what goes from Michelle, the important thing is anyone who wants to join, yeah. you, know, you guys want to hop on. We're going to be far more, we're going to be way more organized in Seesaw, and uh, we'll be able to pull our talents better with Tradis. We'll have, um, everybody will know about it. I think first of all, though, we need to take a look at what the warm-up actually is, um, officially. Is it, you know, is it just like some test, you know, some just for fun? Yeah, or is it like, is it going to be, quals. yeah, because it's quals, it's pretty important, I think. Um, <laughs> no, not at all, so... So we'll be taking a look at that pretty soon, and uh, the competition, the actual competition is 27th through the 29th, so I look forward to it. I find this to be a lot of fun. It's a lot different than the red team, blue team structure that we recently had, but you learn different things from both of them, too, you know? Yeah, everybody's got their own take on how to do it. Yeah. So you guys have any, uh, any other ideas or uh, comments, comments for the girls in Shell Code? Well, like I said, I'm going to be around during that time, so if we want to do something, I'm more than willing. Anyway. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's, uh, let's wrap this up. It's going to spin the RUCTF overview. Hey guys, I really appreciate you all coming out tonight. I really appreciate the, uh, the CTF. That was flipping awesome. You know, we we did better in Seesaw. Um, we're going to do better in Ghost of the Shell Code. We're getting better all the time. You know, it's just it's a hell of a lot of fun doing these things. So thank you very much. Uh, I did find the picture. So one of the things we had was dot hack as a red shell, right? You know, taking out the competition, just scanning everything you could. And right off the bat, when we think it happened, he did grab a screenshot and send it to us. Is boom, got shell. There's one of the competitions. Looks like uh, team four into <laughs> his box. That was that was pretty cool. And I like that uh, the randomness that, of course, that had brings to everything, but to the RUCTF in particular. So, in summary, you know, my sec RUCTF. 32nd out of 99. 99 teams worldwide, we were 32nd. Just damn good. Woohoo! Damn good for our, really our first official CTF getting together. Got a year to practice to sharpen up. You know, Len's got some great ideas on how we can do that. I really appreciate Len, you presenting and, and summing that all up for us. There's lots of little CTFs along the way. There's lots of big CTFs that we can still be looking at. And of course, every every meeting gives us a chance to to get better. Next uh, next month, looking at Python, ways that uh, we could use languages, use these skills in competitions, especially since one of the services was Python in this this one. For the next time, four main things we're looking at: packet captures for scoreboard services, having one person take the service, watch those packet captures, extract the uh, the tax. Productionize it, weaponize it, however you want to look at it. We don't necessarily have to be the first one to find an attack. We can be a really fast follower and still place very high in the event. Tar pit between us and the computers. So the, the volume server is dot four. We had all our computers on dot hundred, so we could easily put a tar pit in there. To slow people down, other people were doing red shell attacks. IP tables to protect our team so that we don't end up like uh, like these people. And, uh, you know, more red show goodness, more, more things for individual team members to do, a little more structure so that people know what's going on, can hop in, and can, can participate at whatever level they're able. So, brief look at what's coming up. As Derek mentioned, Ghost in the Shell Code. See Derek if you want to participate in that. Get Andreas. Get involved. That's going to be January 6th and 7th for the warm-up. 27th and 28th for the actual event. Three-day event. Should say 26, 27, 20 for the actual event. My sec meetup is on the 12th, second Thursday of the month. Taz Drummer is going to be presenting on Python, Python and NyQuil. <laughs> so, hope you guys can can make it out for that. 
Then in February, we got Stephen Fox talking about social engineering. That ought to be good. And of course, November will be here before we know it. We'll be back at uh, RUCTF 2012. So again, thanks everyone for coming out tonight. Thanks for joining us. And uh, you know, 2012 is going to rock. Take care.